So in this video, we're going to look at two questions. One, why electric vehicle range is quite short relative to petrol or diesel ICE cars. And two, why it gets even shorter, disproportionately shorter when you tow as my own tests and those of others have proven. So let's start with some EV advantages. And the first one is they've got huge amounts of power and torque. And not only that, the delivery of that power and the torque makes it really easy to tow with. And as soon as you back off the accelerator, for example, the regen kicks in, you can slow right down. Because there's no big engine in the front, you can use that space for storage. And electric vehicles have a better traction control system because you can actually meter out the torque more precisely. And some of them even have motors at each wheel, individual wheel drive, and that gives them a huge advantage in vehicle dynamics, particularly off-road. EVs are also far simpler, so they will be more reliable. And they're even quieter. Listen to this Range Rover Sport PHEV tow off-road. Now EVs are heavier, which is generally a disadvantage, including for four-wheel driving, but for towing, it's an advantage. You want a heavy vehicle, and EVs have the weight central and low, which is exactly where you want it. So electric vehicles are great for towing and off-roading, but they're range limited for two reasons. One is energy density, and the other is aerodynamics. We're gonna cover both those reasons. So energy density first. I've got here two identical vehicles other than the powertrain, the electric Kona and the petrol Kona. The petrol does 6.2 litres to the 100. One litre of petrol weighs around 0.7 kilograms. We multiply that out, and we find that we can drive 23 kilometres per kilogram of energy in the petrol. For the electric, 484 kilometers, 64 kilowatt hour battery, one kilowatt hour uh, is about 5.5 kilograms in terms of battery density. Multiply that out and we end up with 1.4 kilometers we can drive for every kilogram of energy. So obviously quite a big difference there. And here we've got a vehicle weighing 1.3 tons that can drive for 800 kilometers. And here 1.7 tons, only 484. Now this isn't a problem for small around town vehicles such as the Kona itself because the payload isn't really limited. You can still put four five people in it and drive yourself to, um, around the suburbs, not a problem. It does start to be a problem once you get into heavier duty vehicles, because if, if you were going to do something like this with, let's say, a ute, you'd want to use that 400 kilograms, not for the battery, but for payload carrying, towing capacity, etc. Now we can take a look at um, two a Ford F-150s, the electric and the diesel. The electric weighs 2,990 kilograms. The diesel is considerably lighter at 2,140. Um, the range on the electric is 483. Um, and I worked that out to 0.7 kilometers per kilogram. On the diesel, again, using the same uh, metrics, 1,000 kilometers, 12 kilograms per, kilo, um, 12 kilometers per kilogram. So diesel is about twice as much range and 850 kilograms lighter. And that is definitely weight which you'd want to put into payload and towing. Because obviously if you've got it, if you've got it in the car, then that has to be a stronger chassis, stiffer suspension, which is heavier, etc. You get into this um, vicious cycle. Now we come to aerodynamics next, and here's the problem with aerodynamics. Aerodynamic drag is the biggest energy use for vehicles about 50, 60, 70 k's an hour. The exact speed will depend on the nature um, of the vehicle. So for that reason, EG, uh, EVs, they've got really poor energy density as you've seen, so not much energy, energy um, to play with. So they are really aerodynamically efficient and very, very much so. So here's some examples. So here's a Kluger, which we all know and some of us love. Um, compare this to a Tesla X, roughly analogous. And just look at the differences. So the bonnet here is, is uh, much more curved on the Tesla. Of course, there's only an electric motor in there, so there's no need to have the square shape here. But then we look at the windscreen. The Kluger's got a more upright windscreen. Um, the Tesla doesn't. And at the back, we've got this squarish shape here, which is great for load space. On the Tesla, you can see it's very aerodynamically friendly and it just curves like that, which does compromise load space, but does contribute to significantly lower drag. And you can look at the front there, just how much smoother the Tesla is, as well as the recessed door handles. And in fact, most Teslas actually have aerodynamically efficient 
uh, wheels uh, de designs as well. And the same is true of the F-150. So um, there's a number called a drag coefficient, which is essentially how draggy a vehicle is. For the F-150, that's about 0.3. For the diesel one, um, that's about 0.45. And the differences are we've got a grill with the a diesel version, obviously we've got an air intake there that's draggy, but again, even the wheels are designed differently as well. So aerodynamics is really important. All right, so let's get into the reason why um, EV range is affected by aero. So we've got the, the two EVs again here, and these are just rough figures. I'm just going to assign this one, one drag unit. That's not a standard uh, standard unit or anything else like that, but for the purposes of comparison, it will do. Now, the electric we know is less draggy because that's what they're optimized for. I'm going to allocate that one half a drag unit there. There won't be half in practice, but you know, look, we'll run with that to make the maths easy. Then we're going to put a trailer on the back, and that trailer is going to have one drag unit, and we're going to put the same trailer on the back of the EV, which also has one drag unit. So you might be thinking, well, hang on, it's the same trailer, it should reduce the range by both of them by the same amount well not the case because here's what happens one drag unit plus one drag unit is obviously two so compared to the diesel vehicle by itself with the trailer we are doubling the the drag whereas with the electric we've got half a drag unit and one drag unit we've now got one and a half drag units less but that's three times 0.5 um, times three three times the drag compared to the electric vehicle without the trailer. So there's your disproportional um, effect on towing range. So basically that means that it's all about the aerodynamically efficient um, EVs which are disproportionately affected once you start to put extra drag on them. Now that could be a trailer or it could be off-road tires or a roof rack or whatever else. You'll hurt an EV more than you will an ice or uh, a diesel or petrol car for that reason. Now I have done comprehensive testing on this so you can see the video linked now. Um, here's a brief summary of results. I had my Ranger and I towed a car trailer with it and a caravan did the same for the EV. I loaded the car trailer to be heavier than the caravan and you can see that off this 106 kilometer route 27% um, increase in consumption for the Ranger off the car trailer 31% off the um, off the caravan whereas the EV towing 54% so again a greater percentage but massive increase because of the more aerodynamic uh, drag on the caravan so that, that kind of bears out and there's many other people who've done similar tests. All right, now let's look at a real world kind of equivalent here. So this is a trip I did with my family, um, towing my, my off-road caravan, um, and we did a fair bit of sand driving, and we actually also towed the caravan through sand as well, so really high consumption. So here's the stats. Um, 204 kilometers driven, not that far. Combination of bitumen towing, sand towing, and sand driving. We used 56 liters on that trip, um, and I'm going to assume that the range is 30% efficient. Now what that means is that out of every one energy unit or 10 energy, energy units get put in, I'm only using three to actually propel the car. The remaining 70% gets lost. And where does it get lost? Well, listen to the car. It gets lost in noise. It gets lost in heat. That's why I've got a radiator. There's lots of friction there, etc., etc. So um, very inefficient, but um, and that, that's a bit painful when you're paying for diesel at the pump, let me tell you. So that means that we actually use 16.8 litres of that 56 litres of fuel I bought to actually propel the car. Now we know that there's 38 megajoules of energy per litre of diesel, which means that um, we used 638 megajoules of energy to move my car and trailer around, around that trip. Um, and when I got back to the servo, I had 60% of my fuel remaining and have an extended range 140 litre tank in the Ranger. Now, what if I had an EV for that trip? Well, let's take that 638 megajoules we need to shift um, a vehicle plus my trailer around that trip. And we know that one kilowatt hour is 3.6 megajoules. We divide that through and we find that we need 177 kilowatt hours um, of energy to actually move the vehicle around. 
However, it's not going to be quite that simple because remember the efficiency, right? So we need to carry more battery capacity than we actually need because there's some efficiency losses. Now, EVs are sort of 85, 90% efficient. So I've split that and called it 87%. So we're just going to make that 177, 204 kilowatt hours. And then that is what battery size I'd need to go from 100%, do that trip and come back at 0%. Except of course, I don't want to come back at 0% because that gives me no extra range, no extra safety factor or anything. So let's multiply it out a bit. 5.5 kilograms per kilowatt hour. That means the battery is going to weigh about 1.1 tons there. Now, if I go for the same reserve range of 60%, I ended up with a 326 kilowatt hour battery um, weighing 1.8 tons. And there is no EV, no anywhere on the market, which is anywhere close to 326, or even if I knocked it down to 300. So basically, um, an electric vehicle could not do that fairly short um, trip which which I did with my family and my caravan and um, yeah there's just nothing on the market which, which is capable of, of doing that. So um, that is however long range and remote 4x4 four four, uh, towing. If you're just going down to the boat ramp or just towing it in other different locations then EVs can definitely work for you. And here's another example. So here, same car again, and this time I'm towing another car to a racetrack. And this time we drove 360 kilometers, used 52 liters of fuel, and again, 30% efficient. So 15.6 um, liters used to propel the car. Again, 38 megajoules a liter liter and I'm going to assume I had an 80 litre tank and forget my long range tank this time so 35% remaining. So let's take that 593 megajoules of energy, we'll multiply that through, we need 165, 80% um, efficient we actually need 189 and then we end up with needing a 246 kilowatt hour battery um, weighing 1.3 tonnes which again is more than anything on the market. So would I say that wouldn't work? Well, actually, I think it would work. And the reason is that I have the ability to charge overnight. I drove, it's a longest drive, so drove overnight, um, could have recharged overnight there. And the car was at the racetrack the entire day doing nothing. It just could have been plugged into a charger. So if I take those figures and divide them by two, I end up with 123 kilowatt hours and 676 kilograms of battery weight. And remember that battery weight's going to be um, taken against all of the ice engine and um, the transmission and everything else. So it's, it's not like you're adding that onto an ice vehicle. So it starts to be durable now. And there are EVs, um, EV utes out there with batteries of 130 kilowatts plus. And Rivian has been um, optioning up a 180 kilowatt hour battery, so it, it can work. Okay, so cost wise, um, those 52 liters at $2.09 would have cost me $109, and uh, 189 kilowatt hours would have cost me 66. Now, the 35, and that's a um, $42 saving. Now, 35 cent per kilowatt hour, that's variable. If you've got lots of solar at home, it will cost you nothing. Obviously, the sunk cost of the solar panels, you can pay up to 60 cents per liter for. Uh, so not 60 cents per kilowatt hour for commercial um, fast charging, which is probably one of what you need to be doing, given the fact you might not have a lot of time and the fact that these have, um, that these have big batteries as well. I haven't included in here run costs. The EV is going to be a lot cheaper to service. On the other hand, it's going to be a lot more expensive to buy. So your five-year cost of ownership, um, who knows where that would land. Right at the moment, every time I've done the sums, EVs don't work out cost-effective over five years for the average Australian, but that is slowly changing. Now, the other um, point about this is that when you do get to a location, um, I like to be able to just focus on whatever my activity is and not worry about recharging, etc. With a long range tank and my diesel ute, I can fill up on a Thursday, go do what I want to do over the weekend and not worry about fueling up that vehicle again till the next, um, sometime the next week. Can't really do that with an EV. 
So to sum read and first point, I think EVs are inherently great 4x4s and tow cars. I've towed of a, with, with some EVs now, towed of a lot of other vehicles, and I think EVs are superior. Um, they are range limited for long range towing and for four wheel driving re remote operations at the moment. But I think that will change. What we need is about a three times energy density improvement. And I think something like solid state batteries will give us that. However, that's not gonna be the entire problem solved because charging infrastructure is huge. Imagine that you get 10, 15 cars arriving at a small rural town and they all need to charge large batteries very quickly. Well, that infrastructure is gonna be very expensive to put in and even when it's put in it's going to take a long time for everyone to charge their vehicles and then if you're towing you've got bigger vehicles um, I have I have uh, towed and charged and I've got to unhitch the trailer it's a pain it's, it's just extra friction you don't need so I think it's a bit of a way off yet but fundamentally all of this is a bit like when the car replaced a horse it's just a question of time infrastructure and te technology improvements we're really kind of at the infancy of EVs at the moment whereas ICE vehicles are at the end, end of their life cycle it's pretty exciting uh, time to be watching the industry so thank you for watching hope you found this interesting if you do have any questions or comments please drop them in the comment section and i appreciate your time